All right. That's a bullish close. 8 and 21 EMAs have now crossed up here. So I'm looking for it to just stay above this 8 EMA and continue higher. As long as this market sentiment line holds the buy zone on GBP AUD, this position should still move up. Now, this is my second trade of the day. For those of you that are tuning in a little bit later, this is the second trade of the day. I actually took a loss this morning. So I want to explain that to you guys so I can give you the lesson from that. There's some value to be found there. But if you're new, just make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you find any value in this video at all. If it helps you think about your trading a little bit differently or maybe think about your trading in a more risk-based manner, then I'm doing my job correctly. So smash that thumbs up button for me. Now, this is the position I took this morning. So same trade you just saw on my screen. Now, this is just a photo of it. This is GBP AUD. I know I've got a lot of notes on here. You can read them if you'd like. But if you're not in our group in ASFX, some of the notes here, some of the slang might not make sense to you. But what I was doing was I was seeing GBP AUD move higher overnight, making higher lows and higher highs, holding the 50 EMA. And I saw a perfect market sentiment line here in the buy zone telling me that we were probably going to move higher today. That was the intention of the whoever was in control, whether it be buyers or sellers. Today, it's buyers. So when we pulled back to the 50 EMA this morning, by the time I was at the desk at about five o'clock, we saw it sit here for 45 minutes, which told me this could be a higher low, just like we saw last night, and we could easily continue higher towards this blue box I have drawn at the top here at 183.35. That level is a zone drawn from yesterday's high. So it's the high of weeks set yesterday, which was Monday. Now that's a target for us because not only is it a resistance zone, a horizontal zone, but we've also got this bearish divergence on top and that bearish divergence line goes right into that zone right as we take that entry. So that's also another confirmation that this is where we're looking for, to take the trade to. The mistake that I made on the trade, quite simply, was that I moved my stop loss. I think another mistake that I made was that I graded it a B setup when it should have probably been a C setup. Both of those situations, if I would have not done those things improper, I would have done better on this trade. Now, I'm in the second position and I'm probably going to be able to cover a good chunk of it for sure. I don't think I'm going to be able to cover the whole thing right now, but hopefully I can by the end of the day. We'll get to that in a second. But what I did wrong, like I said, was I moved the stop loss from 183 flat here at that significant number down to about 182.92. I wanted to give it more time to hold the 200 EMA before I got out of the trade because I felt that this perfect market sentiment line was really in control today and that was going to have us move higher. Now, I was ignoring the fact that it had crossed the 8 and the 21 EMA down and that it had broken under the 50 EMA, which is both of those things are bearish signs. So I ignored that. And then on the one minute after I took the position, I thought about closing it here at break even, but I didn't. And even as the one minute market sentiment line pulled into the sell zone, this is where I should have been stopped out. I still didn't get out and I ended up moving the stop. So the two mistakes that I want you guys to take from this are one, really trust your stop loss. You do the work in the back testing for a reason. There's no excuse to move the stop. If it comes down to the 200, I can get in again if I find a signal. Me wanting to be right is what caused me to move the stop loss. Now I was in it small and I think that played into me not caring a little bit too. So that's important as well. I was following good risk management, trading it with proper size so it wouldn't blow me out if I did move the stop, but it almost made me careless because it was a small position. So don't get careless even with your small lots. And the other thing to just pay attention to here is that I could have graded it proper as a C setup. And what that would have done is it would have had me take profit at one R and move my stop loss into profit. Because again, the original stop loss was not 17 pips. It was like 10 pips and it moves up 12. So that's over one R and on C setups, I lock my stop and take half the trade off at one R. So seeing that it did that, I know I could have just been more honest in my grading and not been so confident just because of the perfect market sentiment. And if I was more honest, I probably would have given it a C because there are at least two knocks against it. You have the bearish divergence, you have the horizontal zone, so that that resistance level above, so that's a knock. And the second thing here is the fact that we were in a downshift when I was looking to go long. And you guys have seen the other streams where we would much rather be buying it when we're already in that upshift with the eight above the 21. Since we didn't get that, we were trading into that shift. It's always going to be a lower probability setup. So moving the stop was stupid and the grading was a little bit aggressive. But I hope that that, I hope that me sharing that can help you understand that, look, we all make mistakes. I've been trading for six years, like I said earlier, and I still do this sometimes. It's just what happens when human emotion comes into play and we don't create enough space between our emotions and the decisions that we make. So it's just increased awareness will help us overcome these emotional decisions that we all tend to make. So own the mistake, see what you could do better. I need to not ride the high from yesterday's win into today as well. I don't need to be right. I just need to make money. And it would have been a lot smarter to just get out quick, right when that candle shifted down, get out of the trade and just wait for it to give me a better setup. Because as you can see, it gives me a great setup here off the average daily range 
level and off yesterday's low as that level as well. So if you zoom out, you can see yesterday's low right here drawn with that pin. That zone is where we bounced yesterday. And if you go back even into last week, you can see it showing a lot of resistance and then support to it short for a brief period of time, but then resistance again to it as the week developed. So coming to this significant level, I felt that, okay, I'm still long biased overall because of the market sentiment line. I know that there's still some buying here, buyers here. I know that this is a support level from last week and from yesterday's low, and it was already maxed out ADR. See ADR is the green horizontal lines. It's already hit its max for the day. So I'm thinking I can trade off that ADR level back towards high a day, back towards ADR high. Now, since I took the position, all I'm watching for is this to hold the yellow 8 EMA. As long as it stays above the 8 through my back testing, because I have markups of trades like this off significant levels, it could hold the 8 EMA and actually break ADR today. That would not really surprise me, so to speak. Because originally, in the first notes, if you saw, the higher time frames are more long biased than short bias. The 4 hour has some resistance up here, but other than that, the 1 hour and the daily are both long biased, which feeds the idea that this wants to come higher today. And again, if you just look at that one minute, the structure here is a lot better. If you look back at where I took the position this morning, I ended up getting long right here with market sentiment actually in the sell zone. That's not a great position to be in. It never gives a solid push off the 50 with market sentiment in the buy zone at that point. So like Lindsay waited, she never got in this morning and I think she handled it better than I did. I was just being aggressive because I saw a divergence, I saw it rising and I didn't want to miss the move. So she waited and she ended up just not getting in. Now that was, I think, again, a better move than what I did by moving my stop. However, if I just would have done it proper, this trade would have already been enough to cover that loss and I'd be profitable already. Now I'm trying to still work my way back, right? Here, you see the divergence sets in, RSI rising, price is falling, higher low, higher low, it breaks the 50 here. And when it does that, look where market sentiment is in the buy zone compared to in the sell zone when I did it this morning earlier on the same pair, right? So this is a better setup on the one minute, which made me more confident to trust this stop level and let it trade at least up to the one minute 800 EMA, which is exactly where it slowed down. And it looks like it's retesting that level right now. So as long as the market sentiment line wants to hold the buy zone, I'm going to stay in this trade. If market sentiment wants to break back down, that's where I'll potentially get out. But my stop loss is locked in profit, as you can see here at 182.70, almost 182.71. Locked in profit, so if it does shoot down, I can't lose any money on this thing, but I want to potentially hold it to see it come towards this high a day zone, trade it from the bottom of the range to the top of the range. So that was the thought process so far on these two trades on GBPAUD, and I hope that me sharing my mistake, sharing the thing that I definitely could do better on going forward, and you guys can hold me accountable to that, I hope it just makes you open to being wrong yourself. None of us can avoid this. No trader is perfect. And you can even see some of the guys that have been trading five times as long as me. They still take losses. No one is inevitable. Can, you know, what is, how, do, how do I say this? No one can avoid taking losses. I don't need to try to use big fancy words. None of us can avoid it. We can just use proper position sizing to take the losses proper. We cannot move our stop. That was my mistake today, amongst others. But with proper sizing, we can make those losses disappear in the bigger picture. Two weeks from now when we're streaming, we won't even remember this loss. We'll remember all the wins that happened before that, between that and the two-week, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So that's the recap on the trade so far. And now we're going to continue to watch this develop into the rest of the day. It's about 10 a.m., which is normally when I stop trading. So no matter what happens here, I'm managing this position and I'm not taking any more trades today. And then tomorrow morning on the stream, I'll update you guys and let you know exactly how this position finishes out because it doesn't look like I'm getting out of it anytime soon. But I do need to get off soon to go to my boxing class, which I'll just manage the trade from my phone. And then I'll check it when I come back to the desk if I'm still in it or not. And that's the entire idea this morning on GBPAUD. So I hope that that helps.